Greetings and shalom. Welcome to this broadcast. This is the day that Yahweh has made or continues to be the day that Yahweh has made. It began last evening. And we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. As you can see from the topic, we are continuing, as promised, to look at this matter of when liars lead. Much of the disaster regarding doctrines in the church is tied to this basic issue. So I bid all of you shalom, shalom Apostle Joshua and others, and shalom speaks to there being peace that scripture says goes beyond our understanding. I am overjoyed. I am delighted to be able to speak to you, the saints in the kingdom of Yahweh. And Shalom Apostle Barnum, I see you live as well. And to be able to enlighten you from the scripture so that you would not be led astray and so that you would not be... Uh, thank you so much for the feedback already, right? Video and audio are clear. Thank you, Brother Paul. And so that you would not be afraid to speak to that which you believe. Many persons do not receive notifications from me for whatever reason. If you don't mind, please share this broadcast with them or invite them and let them know that I'm live. I know Sister Melanie, she doesn't get, uh, Henry, she does not receive notifications. And there are so many. It is well, Apostle Branham. Shalom, shalom, shalom to you, Bernard and others. Greetings. There are so many people who are unable to confidently speak to what they believe in. My assignment is to give you scripture, give you revelation from the scripture. Hello, son. So that you can speak with confidence and with boldness regarding certain matters. So I bid you all shalom, shalom to all of you. Uh, we have not forgotten the, the time we're in right now in the world. We have not forgotten the intense burden that some of you may be under, uh, being locked in your house for so long and all the rest of it, but it remains well. It is always well. Shalom. I know Apostle uh, Thomas does not receive notifications. Uh, Sister Audit doesn't receive notifications. So, thank you for sharing this broadcast with them. Let me begin by letting you know that my teaching you as an apostle of the Lord Yeshua is not about being right in the context of an argument. Jalil, good to see you, son. Shalom, shalom, shalom to all of you saints. Blessings. My assignment is not about being right in the context of an argument. Susan got no notification today, girlfriend. <laughs> My assignment is about your being equipped as saints. Being able to speak to matters regarding your faith, which includes this one the Shabbat, with great confidence. And you must never as a saint, and those of you fellowship with me in Georgetown in the USA would know I've told you this many times, even in Linden Come As You Are ministries, you must never as a saint be happy to tell people, well, you believe what you believe, I believe what I believe, and that's the end of the matter. That is not how it goes. Not because you are unable to answer them. So shalom to all of you. You must be equipped as a saint. Auntie Gwen doesn't get notification, I have to call her as well. You must be equipped as a saint to speak to people with absolute confidence. You hear, Desiree? You must be able to speak to people with absolute confidence because you were taught well. When Yeshua left the disciples and they, be, they began to encounter opposition, they weren't afraid to talk because they were taught well. It's raining, by the way, in Linden, Guyana. So we're looking at when liars lead. When liars lead, and this is the third part, and we're referencing the Shabbat. Now last week, I had an interesting week, because some Adventists decided that you saw one in the broadcast, and they'll continue actually. They decided that they're going to defend their faith, which you have the right to do. And when they are seeking, or were seeking to defend what they believed in regarding the Saturday Sabbath, 
they did what I told you regarding the term exegesis, eisegesis, sorry. Eisegesis is when the reader decides, or a person decides, that they're going to just give their interpretation of the scripture, although, although what they're saying is not there. Shalom to all. They're just going to dump their ideas in the scripture and make it what they say it is. So, for example, there is absolutely no record in scripture. And if any Adventist shows up or any Sabbath keeper shows up, I'll ask you to show me again today. There is absolutely no record in scripture that speaks to Adam, the first man, keeping anything called Shabbat. Yet an Adventist came to my broadcast last week and said, the rebroadcast, and said that if I'm saying, if what I'm saying is true, why did God in Genesis, he named the book, say that you must remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, which means Adam kept Shabbat. So I said to the man, that's where your error begins. Your error begins at the place whereby you assume that Yahweh said anything. So I said, show me then. So now he can't. So Samisha has a quick question. I heard someone say this morning when Yeshua died, he went three days in hell to fight the devil. <laughs> no, Yeshua never fought any devil. He went, in, according to 1 Kepha chapter 3, verse 20, he went to preach to those who were rebellious during the, during the, the, before the flood. But he never fought anybody. Okay? And I'll teach him that because Adventists are opposed to that as well. 1 Kepha chapter 3, verse 20, makes it very clear. He died, verse 18, in the flesh, and he was made alive by the Spirit. Through whom? The Spirit. He went to speak to those who were once disobedient in the days of Noah. It's in your Bible. But he never went to fight anybody. All right, so... We have to establish, back to Shabbat, certain fundamental principles as we begin, and certain positions as we begin. One such position is, I have never once said, never in my life, said that nobody must keep the Shabbat. If you want to keep the Shabbat because you say, I want to keep Shabbat, I want to keep references there, that's you. Romans 14 says, some honor one day, some honor every day. Auntie Shari, good to see you. The second thing is this. I have never once said, never in my life, that Yahweh never told Yisrael to keep Shabbat. What I have said, what I shall say, is that there is absolutely no letter called an epistle. That's in the letter. No letter to the church which is called the New Testament. No letter to the church that instructs any saint to keep Shabbat. Bernard has it, the great controversy, exactly. Now while you hear, ignore David Williams, he has a fake account. I don't know if it's a he, a she, or an it. I prefer to call the person an it. It has a fake account, so just ignore the per that thing. Now, there is no instruction to the church, absolutely none, that says that the church of Yeshua must keep Shabbat. None. Aaron King, thank you. I was Jesus' person, says Aaron King, because of ignorance, but now I am, I've gained knowledge Wow, and knowledge is power. Thank you so much. Yeshua is faithful, pardon? Oh, Miss Innes is using her son's account. Blessings and thank you. All right? Now, let's remember. I am making declarations that are, that are considered to be very bold, and some persons are afraid to do so. I'm saying it to you without reservation. There is absolutely, I don't know if Brother Terence has an, a notification, Brother Chubby. There is absolutely no commandment, instruction, or teaching to the saints in the kingdom, in, the, in, the, in, in reference to the, the, the letters written by the apostles, that they must keep Shabbat. None. None. Absolutely None. Did I say none? You know, uh, <laughs> all right. 
You know, Lady Deborah, there is no instruction, and I'm repeating this for a purpose. There is no instruction from the Apostle Kiefer, from the Apostle Yaakov, his name is not James, from the Apostle Yochanan, from the elders. There's no instruction from Shaul, because most Adventists hate Shaul, but then still they want to quote him at times from Hebrews, for example. There is no instruction whatsoever that says that the churches must keep Shabbat. None. Here's my challenge to any Adventist, any one of you. Make life easy for you and me. If you find one instruction where the church is commanded to keep Shabbat in the New Testament, I'll become an Adventist tomorrow and follow you all the way. You can't be that because you're, you're supposed to be winning me, right? Remember? So you have it there, there for you. I dare one of you, one of you, to find one scripture in the New Testament where the church is commanded to keep Shabbat and I'll follow you anytime and say I'm an Adventist. And I'll preach in defense of what you believe. Now, currently, the Adventists this day is so significant and so important that your whole life depends on it. But yet, there is no instruction to any church in Scripture that you have to keep Shabbat. None. And we go to Hebrews 4 this afternoon as well. So, we begin with Genesis 1. We begin with Genesis 1. And what I'll do today, that some of you may find very beneficial and interesting, is I shall take you through how I study. Now, let me issue a caveat or a warning here for you. This is not, pardon? This is not for every saint. Saints, hear me carefully. Yeshua the Messiah gave gifts to men. Ephesians 4. He gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some to be pastors, some to be teachers. You are not all apostles according to scripture. You are not all evangelists. You're not all pastors. You're not all teachers. Therefore, that's 1 Corinthians 14 now. You cannot take it upon yourself to say that because I've shown you this, you are equipped to teach the church. If you're illiquid, because you'll end up hurting yourself, I promise you. Kiefer warned people, he said, be careful, because Shaul's writings, some of them are difficult to understand. So Melanie's asking them good questions. So is there no, no Shabbat? Yes, there is. But is there an instruction for us to keep Shabbat? No. There are a group of people who have to keep it until Messiah comes. So Melanie Haynes says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, we'll set some light. No problem, Melanie. Just give me a minute. Okay, so let me, let me show you from the scripture here how I study. That's why I said I do not use just one Bible per se. When I talk to people privately, I explain to them. What I do, I use the complete Jewish Bible because it has the Hebrew names in it. That's the only reason. I don't use the complete Jewish Bible for whether it's accurate in terms of translation. Just because that's the Hebrew name. I use the Hebrew name version of the Bible because it has what is called uh, materials like the, like the lexicon. It has uh, the, 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 the strong concordance and others where I can click on words and I can see what that word meant in the original language. That's important. So what I will show you today is what is called an interlinear Bible. One line has Hebrew, one line has, has English, and it shows you the other line with the, with the Strong's words. So you can, you can see uh, how am I able to understand the original intent in terms of, of scripture. So I'll show you an example and you'll follow me. You'll get it. You'll get hang of it in, in a moment. Genesis 1. Can you see the words on the screen? Just tell me if you can read that please. In red. So the Hebrews read from the right. Go to the right side of the screen please, Mari. The Hebrews read from the right side going to the left. In English, we read from the left to the right. Hebrews don't read like that. They read from the right, and they go back to the left. So the first, on the right side, in the beginning. Paul, you cannot see? Is there anybody else has difficulty seeing? Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. Is that better? Are you live with me? Okay. 
So we, I'll wait to see if, if you can see it now. Let me know, let me have an update. I really want you to see this. No, because we're waiting for it to, 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 to uh, Can you zoom your screen a bit? Okay. Ah, somebody says better. Uh oh. Ah, we get in there. Don't do too much. Uh, don't do too much. Good. Right there. That's okay. Some are seeing and some are not, which is strange. Somebody says better. Great. Okay. So you type in from the right side, okay? In the beginning, that's how you read. Created God. King James Version says God created, which is fine. Which is Elohim. You see the word, point to Elohim above the word God, please marry. You see that? That's Elohim. So you're seeing here, Elohim is not a name. It's clear enough for you to see. So Pastor Reggie is telling person to turn your phone in landscape, it's just to the side, like long way, lengthwise, and it'll be better. Trust Pastor Reginald to solve these problems. <laughs> or put your phone horizontally. All right? I'll use my white phone to show you uh, like that. Hold your phone in this manner and it should be better. Okay? <laughs> Somebody says clear without their glasses. <laughs> okay. So Elohim is not a name. Good? It's a title. So in, begin in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Next. And the earth, so you see how I'm reading from the right side going to the left, was formless and void. This is, I'm showing you how I study now. And darkness was over. Was is in, in square brackets. You mean the word wasn't always there. The face. You have to come across more to left. Let me turn my phone. Of the deep. And the spirit of God, Elohim, was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, Pull, scroll back down. This, and the earth was formless. Just po follow me the pointer. And the earth was formless and void and darkness. Now, darkness. Important for you to note at some point in this broadcast, I'll refer to you again. And darkness was over the face of the deep. Important to note, you'll see why when it comes to Shabbat, this is so important. When it comes to how the Hebrew people are directed to deal with the new month, you'll see why this is important. So there was darkness, there was the, the earth had no form, and the spirit of Yahweh began to move, of Elohim began to move. Let's go up to another uh, text. And said, Elohim, let there be light. And there was light. Next. Verse 4. And saw Elohim the light that was, it should be the good, it was good. And divided Elohim, we're at the bottom now, between the light, the light and between the darkness. Okay. Go to verse 5. This is so important. And called Elohim the light day and the darkness he called night and there was evening and there was 
morning the first day. Now go to verse 14 for me, please. Now, we have saints, a record in Scripture. Shalom, Mama J. You have a record in Scripture of Elohim saying that there should be light. Remember, there was darkness initially. Then Elohim said there should be light. Light appeared, and he divided light from darkness. Watch this. And that was which day? My children are right. The first day. You just read it. What was it? You can type in me see a response. That was which day? That was the first day. Hear me. That was the first day. However, thank you, Senator. Girlfriend beat you out to the punch. However, you will notice in verse 14 now. Good, you're all right. Look at verse 14 now. In verse 14, you will see what happens on the fourth day. So there was a day that began. There was light present. There was darkness present. But there was no sun and there was no moon. Hear me. The first day. When it was finished, there was light present, there was darkness present, but there was no sun, there was no moon. There was light, there was darkness, but there was no sun, neither was there any moon. Shalom, uh, Pastor Martin, good to see you. The script, Floyd, you in the spirit, huh? <laughs> The scripture records that the evening, there was evening, and there was morning, and this was the first day. It said nothing about Sunday. Hear me, let me help you all this afternoon. There was no sun. David, good to see you. There was no sun. How are you then? could arrive at the days of the week to tell me that the first day is Sunday because it's unto the sun God when there was no sun on day one. Adventist. Because you want to talk to creation, I'm speaking, you want to go to creation, let's talk with creation then. Because somebody just said it. But God said, uh, remember the Shabbat day, Yahweh never said remember Shabbat day. In Genesis here. So if he's giving you an account of events in creation, and day one has nothing called the sun, nothing called the moon, how you arrive in a day one being Sunday? It had to be that somebody, after this, a human being decided that the first day of the week to them is called Sunday Unto the sun god Saul, S-O-L. Yahweh never said that. I don't subscribe to the Pope. You maybe could subscribe to the Pope. I don't subscribe to any Pope. None, not one. I don't bow to the Popes. Brother Floyd, I, I, I lo I, that's why I love dealing with him before. This guy, and even now. His mind is quick to notice certain things. And like Regina would say, you're in the spirit. Day one, the Bible, the Bible, that Adventists hold the Bible and say, we believe the Bible. Bring my Bible for me, please, from my bedside. Sorry. It's right by my bedside table. <laughs> Listen. You cannot tell me that there was a day unto the sun God when in the beginning day one had no sun. If day one, you call Sunday and there was no sun. And they won in, in creation. How can you tell me then that Sunday is unto the sun God? Says who? Did Yahweh say that? Absolutely not. Some man told you that. So your contention is being built on a human argument, not a divine event in called creation. 
Now let me help some of y'all. I ain't here to defend nobody Sunday worship because I don't do Sunday worship either. I do not do Sunday worship. I do not do Saturday worship. I don't know what they are. Because if it's Sunday worship, you worship Sunday. If it's Saturday worship, you worship Saturday. I don't worship days of the week. I fellowship with saints on many different days. But let me make it clear to you what I'm saying this afternoon. I'm not here to defend you going to church on Sunday. I'm here to address a matter that the saints need to know about. So an Adventist will hold their Bible and say, this is my, I believe the Bible. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible, King James, of course. The Bible is true. The Bible is true. Well, where in the Bible did you see Elohim call day one Sunday? Or where did you find the sun on day one? S-U-N. Nowhere. But there was light. And there was darkness. And that was a day. Now let's, let me prove it to you in verse 14. Verse number 14. Have you enlarged the screen for them? Can you see verse 14? Scroll up for me, please. So we in Genesis... Sorry, go back, go back down. Sorry about that day hard. Genesis 1, 14. Can you see that? Is that clear? Remember, put your phone in landscape. Turn it sideways. You'll see better. Let me zoom a little bit for you. Is this good? Put your phone in landscape. Horizontal. Somebody said you can't see the comment if you do that. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I study a little further. And said God, Elohim, I'm reading the red, the red writing is the English. And said God, let there be lights, plural, in the firmament. Scroll up a little more, a little higher. Right. Of the heavens, too much. To divide between the day and between the night. It's good. And let them be, look at this part here, for signs and seasons. Now seasons above it has a number, a code. 4150. When you click on 4150, you are going to see something which is what that word means in the original language. The word is mo'ad. That's how it's pronounced. Mo'ad is a Hebrew word. You can see it's a Hebrew term. What does mo'ad mean? Mo'ad means appointed time. You can't miss this. Place or meeting. All right, saints, let me help you with this here. The term when Yahweh said, go back, when Yahweh said, when Yahweh said, they must be for sign, and let them be, let's read the line again, point to the line for me, and let them be for signs and seasons. The term seasons is not autumn, winter, Spring, uh, 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 summer. Melanie said even our eight-year-old daughter understood. Well, look at that. And I praise Yahweh for that. The term seasons has a meaning. It doesn't mean the four seasons. What does it mean? Click on the word. Thank you, Mari. Moad means a point, definition. See the word definition there? Appointed time place, or meeting. All right. Since you all need to hear this, since you need to hear this, you can go back to the, the text for me, please. So what was Yahweh telling them here? That these two lights that are now going to be formed, that's still 40 now, we're on day four. These two lights that are going to be formed in the heavens, they are going to be for signs. They're going to be for seasons, not the seasonal period of the year, for the four seasons. It's going to be to tell somebody down the road about appointed times. This is important. So before any man was made, my Lord, there was an appointment divinely set regarding when 
certain things will happen. And how would man know how to do how those appointments are going to come? By looking at these two lights, the sun and the moon. If the Adventists say that they follow the Bible, then their time for seasons, which will be appointed time for gatherings and so on, must come from the Bible. Yahweh never said that the Roman Catholic will give you the time and the seasons, the sun and the moon. That is why Israel has a loony solar calendar. They don't have a solar calendar like the Catholic Church that you follow Adventists. 365 days a year is a solar calendar. It, it looks at when the earth makes one complete rotation around the sun. That's your calendar that you go by and say every Saturday in a Pope Gregory calendar is a, is, a, is a Sabbath day. And that's an absolute lie. That, I say, is an absolute lie. Without reservation. It's a lie. Because Yahweh never said that. The two lights are to be for seasons and signs. For years and for days. Oh, let's go marry this. getting better. Hold on. Let me show you again. It's on your screen now. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Go back up. Let me begin. Read from the beginning, please. Thank you. 14. And said Elohim, let there be lights, plural. Good to see you, Andrea. In the firmament, which is in the, in the space, of the heavens, to divide between the day and between the night. Go down now. And let them be for signs and seasons. I tell you what seasons mean. Appointed time or meeting. For days and years. Click on, on 4150 again, please, Mary. Go to definition. Look, saints. How could Yahweh... Go, go, go up. Okay, you have, your assignment is to watch here to see when she clears the, 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 the comments, right? Good. All right, right here. Now look at this. The word Moad, I should say, do not understand, <laughs> means appointed time, place, or meeting. Saints, how could Yahweh talk about a meeting when there's no person to meet? <laughs> Why would he do that? Why would Yahweh speak about meeting when there's no person meeting? Let's go back. Because I told you last week that everything about man, period, was prepared for him before he arrived. When Yeshua was selected, that wasn't just a, a happenstance. Oh, let me, let, me, let me choose Yeshua. Yahweh, before the foundation of the world, made certain decisions. And he made preparation according to those decisions. Keep going. Next. So you see these days of the times and seasons. So let's see now. I'll search the screen again. And let them be, that's verse 15, for lights in the firmament of the heavens to shine, let's go, upon the earth and it was so. Next verse, verse 16. I hope you can see with me. And made Elohim two lights. Great, the light, greater to rule the day. Now that's why they had to, to rearrange the, language, the, the, the structure of these sentences to make sense to some of you. And the light, 
lesser to rule the night. All right, let me ask all you brilliant ones, are they, including Adventists and Sabbath keepers. What do you see at night? The sun or the moon? In most places, the moon. Thank you, if my baby answered. I need four years old. The moon, not the sun. Important to note. Okay. And he made the stars. Next. And set them, Elohim, God, in the firmament of the heavens to shine upon the earth. Next. That's verse 18. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light and between the darkness and saw God, Elohim, that it was good. Next verse, important. And there was evening and there was Morning, look at this, the fourth day. All right. Here's my question for all you brilliant ones out there, because I'm not smart. So you have to help me. You most, you're smarter than I am. When did Yahweh make the sun and the moon? Which day? Y'all could not speak like me. <laughs> my children are answering, I'm so glad. I praise Yahweh for this. On the fourth day. So they're one there was no sun. So you can't say day one is unto the sun God. Day two, there was no sun. Neither was there any moon. But there was light. Day three, there was no sun. Neither was there any moon. Even when Yahweh made a declaration about the sun and the moon, there was no sun and any moon. Until afterwards he made them, and that was the fourth day. The sun did not exist until the fourth day. How can Adventists tell me then that Sunday, day one, according to them, is unto the sun god? How? When there was no sun. So you fashion an argument just for people to say that they have to go to church on Saturday. That's all you did. The argument you raised had nothing to do with the truth from creation. Go. No, let's go back to the slideshow now. Now, according to the slideshow, we have got to establish and my daughter asked me a very important question and I'll, ask you just, I'll answer it because it, for her sake. When did he make the planets? It begins from Genesis 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven, planetary structures, and the earth. But the earth had no form. The earth was formless, and he decided that earth would be the place that we'll inhabit. So are they planets? Yes, because he made the heaven, the expanse of the heaven, and the earth. But there is one that he chose. Scientists, you can search from now until your mother is born again. 700 times from her mother's womb, and you still not find any life of human being, humankind on any planet because Yahweh never decided that human beings will live on another planet. Never. So we have Genesis 1, 14 speaking to seasons and season speaks to Moad. Then Psalm 1, 14 speaks to seasons. Psalm 1, 4, verse 19. <coughs> All right, so let me, let me show you how this, we can read another way now, how I study. Tell me if you can see this on the screen. CD, <laughs> that's my cousin. Listen here, you must be my cousin. That's a London right there. CD said, man, I have this discussion with my sisters who are Seventh-day Adventists. I bless you, my cousin. So if you, can you see the left side of the screen? Let me see if you can get this now. This is about all the edification here. So Psalm 104, look at the top. Psalm 104, 19 is what we're reading now, okay? He, this is Psalm 104. So the left side is English, the middle now is Strong's, and what you see transliterated is the Hebrew writing. And you see the Hebrew letters, uh, go to the right side. The Hebrew letters at the top, 
and the English letters at the bottom. That's how you transliterate. And I'll show you something name you show in a minute. Okay? Now, he made, we read in the English side, the moon, the word moon is there. See that? Okay. For the seasons. Remember we said we saw what seasons meant. What does season mean? Moad, which means an appointed time, a meeting place, a place or a meeting. Shalom. The sun knows the place. Saints, this is important. He, David is speaking to, David is speaking about Yahweh. He made the moon for the seasons, which would be the appointed time, the meeting place. <laughs> Have you, uh, can you see that on the screen? He made the moon for the Moad. And the Moad speaks to appointed time, speaks to place, speaks to meeting. So whenever Yeshua had to meet, David the king said, who kept the law said, hey, we know when we meet. We know the appointed time. How do we know that? According to the moon. Not Pope Gregory's calendar. So the Hebrew people had appointed times. Their Shabbat was an appointed time. How did they know when to keep Shabbat? It's on your screen. It's right before you from the Bible. Psalm 104 verse 19. That came from the moon. Because the moon was made for seasons. Brother T, I've been looking for you all afternoon. Shalom. Is there? Joel is asking a question. Joel Gibson, Apostle, please understand. How should we, I guess you'll say, help me understand. How should we calculate a day? Is it 24 hours from, from the sun down to sundown? Yes. However, important to note is the Hebrew day doesn't have 24 hours in it. Every hour doesn't have the same length as you see you. It has 24 hours. But according to the light, some hours are shortened. I hope you get that. They are 24 hours in a Hebrew day, but they're not 24, 60 minute period in a Hebrew day. According to the lighting, how the moon is moving, they shorten the day or they lengthen the day. Pope Gregory and others, we keep usually a 60 minute hour, 24 hour day, regardless of light or darkness. But the Bibles, I hope you understand the jewel, and I know that you would. So there are 24 hours, but every hour in Hebrew culture doesn't have, 20, doesn't have, doesn't have uh, 60 minutes in it. Some can be as short as 45 minutes, according to the sun and according to the moon. Next slide, please. What does Moad mean? Because the moon is made for seasons according to what the scripture says. What do you see on your screen? It speaks to... Moad speaks to our nine or outline of biblical usage. Highlight that term for me, please. Outline of biblical usage, meaning in the Bible, how is it used? It means appointed place, appointed time, meeting, appointed time, appointed time. Oh, the good one is the next one is good. Sacred season, a set feast. Appointed season, appointed meeting. All of this, Yahweh said, He made the moon for. I hope you get this. He made the moon. Go back to the previous slide if you can, please, baby. Psalm 104, verse 19. He made, reading on the left side, the moon for seasons. What does the word seasons mean? We have to find the meaning of the word. Look at right before you. It means appointed place, appointed time, meeting, appointed time in general, or a sacred season, a set feast, an appointed season, a signal, tent of meeting. Okay, next. Let's read further. 
Strong's definition. Muad or Muad feminine is properly an appointment that is a fixed time or season specifically a festival conventionally a year by implication an assembly as convened for a definite purpose thank you Faith Riley for helping me out to typing now saints what does that tell you does the scripture not tell us, not Nigel London tell you, does the scripture not tell you that the moon was made for meetings and for feasts and everything has to be determined? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Exactly, see, they, they like saving time. Why? Because they want to, to, to extend the, the, the light of the, the amount of time you spend in the sun. However, Yahweh told you, surely it's easy to do. You simply shorten your hour. So you still have 24 hours. Since if you're there, Yahweh, next slide, Yahweh has given Yisrael a specific, very, very clear instruction. The moon is what determines, the moon determines your appointed time and your feasts. Not the sun. Not just any day you want. Which moon? We have to find it out now. So let's go to Exodus 12, baby, please. Exodus 12, verse 1. Exodus 12, verse 1. And we shall see from Exodus 12, verse 1, if Yahweh has given the moon... Because Yisrael, if he said, if Yahweh said plainly, and David the king repeated what he knew, that you give the moon for seasons. What seasons? Appointed time, feast, festivals, Shabbat, all of them. So Exodus 12, we have to see the record. This is when Yahweh is telling Yisrael, tonight you're leaving here. Oh, this is good saints. Exodus 12 is where we get a teaching about Peshach or Passover. Look at what Yahweh said to Israel, to Moshe and Aaron. Look at this. And spoke Yahweh to Moses. His name is Moshe. Look at the top. Go up. Go up. Just see right. See that? Isn't it? Look at English language and, and, and here. King James and others call, say his name is Moses. When it's right before you, the pronunciation of his name, Moshe. Now I know that uh, the it, David Williams, will feel kind of bad now because here you see right before your eyes, Yahweh on the screen. Why? Because Yahweh's, Yahweh never made... Yahweh never revealed his name, he said, Exodus 3. He did not make his name known to Abraham. He didn't make his name known to Yaakov. He didn't make his name known to Adam. But he said to Moshe, I'll make my name known to you. That's scripture. Very clear. So and spoke Yahweh to Moshe and Aharon. That's the name at the top here. <laughs> In the land, next, of Egypt, saying. Now verse 2 is all mixed up. <laughs> my daughter is able to decipher it. This month. Your shall be beginning. In other words, saying this shall be the beginning of months. The first, it shall be to you. The first month of, or of the year month. Meaning, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, now Shemaria. <laughs> There's a word month. Saints, you all need to see this. There is a word month. Can you see it? Can everybody see the word month on the screen in red? Where the cursor is circling. Can you see the word month before you here? Yes? Just give me a yes. I want to ensure you can see. Can you see?
Great. So they sing the word month. Look at this. When I click on, what, on the number, it gives me the meaning of the word month. You can see that by now. And you can do this online. So click on the word month. You need to see this. You need to see this. The word month, stop. Go to the number for me. The word month is the word chodesh. Chodesh, it's a Hebrew word. Chodesh. Ruach chodesh. it means speaks of what is holy. Saints, this is extremely critical. Look on your screen. The word month, look on your screen, speaks to new moon. This is crazy important. Very important. The word month speaks to there being a new moon. So Yahweh told Moshe, this shall be the beginning of month for you. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Watch this. When was it? A new moon night. It's right before you. So how did Yeshua determine the month? The new moon. It's right before you. Let's find, let's find this clear, clearly here now. Paul said that you can't see. Put your phone in landscape, brother Paul. You may be able to see it. Just scroll up a bit, Mary. Oh, that's the internet. Go up a bit. No. Oh, right. No, too much. Come down a bit. Okay? Is it better now, brother Paul? Put up a bit, little bit. Maybe you need to so she can go above the comments. So you can see what's happening on your screen. So, when you see the word month, is before you, it means new moon. And you'll see it further in scripture. Now, what did Israel do at new moon? This is important because Yahweh said new moon is given for a season. The season determines certain festivals and certain things that you're going to do. Okay, the moon is for seasons. That's what the scripture said. As long as you see the moon, there's certain seasons you know you have to partake in. Important. What does season mean? Appointed time, meeting, appointed place, festival, feast, gathering. When do you meet? Even tent of meetings was for the word season. So the moon determined when Israel met. Not Saturday, not Sunday, not Monday, not Tuesday, the moon. Let's go to Numbers chapter 10 for me, please, Mary. Verse 10. Numbers 10, 10. See, she's looking for Numbers 10, 10 now. The moon determined when Israel had appointed times, feasts, festivals, meetings. How can Adventists tell you that Saturday is the seventh day of the week and you have to meet every Saturday? When Yahweh said the moon determined it, not the name of the day of the week, the moon determined it. And you see what I'm saying in a minute. Very, very informative. So in Numbers 10, Yahweh is telling them exactly what to do. You see the word Moat show up here again on your screen. Yahweh is telling them here, verse 10 of Numbers 10, and in the day of your gladness. Click on the number for gladness for me, please. Scroll up. Too much. In your sim cow, joy, gladness, mirth. So they're celebrating now. Good? Go back. Look at what happened. And in your appointed feast, the term appointed feast has the same number, 4150. What is, what is appointed feast? Click. This, the, 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 fam the familiar word is back before you again. Moad. What does Moad speak to appointed time, place, or meeting? which is the word season. 
The scripture says he gave the moon for seasons. The New North American Standard Bible is to the right to the screen and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for days. Important now. Let's go to Numbers 29, verse 6, please. Numbers 29. And I want you to see what is happening on the screen. The 29th chapter, verse number 6. As I said, I'm going to show you how I study or how I get into the text to understand what I'm saying to you from original language. Besides the burnt offering with the new moon, look at this, 2320, you see the term new moon there? Hold on. 2320 is above, is above you. Besides with the burnt offering, the new moon is before your screen here. Let's click on 2320 and see what new moon is. The word Kodesh is before you. Right before you. New moon. Look at this. A month. Just, just highlight the definition. Surround it. New moon. A month. is before your eye saints. What determined the month or the beginning of the month for Israel? It's before you. The new moon marks the beginning of a month which is the first day of the month. Does Pope Gregory's calendar function like that? They don't hear any old answer, you know, that they'd be whispering. <laughs> right. Does Pope Gregory use this system to determine the beginning of any month? No. They just come on. So you see here, go back please, where Yahweh makes it clear as to what they do. You have, it's, the new moon has, look at what the month has. It's grain offering. And burnt offering with the regular. And it's grain offering and drink offering. According to the ordinance as an aroma sweet, an offering made by fire. Since you know Yahweh is telling Israel in the scripture here, he's telling them plainly that there's a festival that they kept at new moon. He's telling them that there is a festival kept at new moon. Now, someone may be saying, this person, David, I say again, William's typing. And you may be wondering, why am I not engaging him in discussion? When he creates an account that's authentic, I can speak to him. I don't speak to fake accounts. If you have to create a fake account to talk to me, we don't have a conversation. But in case you may be saying, but what he's saying may be true, there are no vowels in the name, in, 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 uh, in the name. that's how you know an idiot by nature. Because Yahweh's name was never written beginning. It was spoken. Vowels are only added to help people to pronounce it when they're reading. I don't need a vowel to say somebody's name. Let me help this moron. No, no, help him. Let me help you to identify a stupid person like David Williams, who has a fake account, by the way. So it, whatever it is, somebody can be absolutely illiterate, but can they say your name with vowels in it? If somebody cannot read any letter, I mean, they can't even read a name. As people say, your name is big before you, you, can't, you, you don't know what it is. Can the person say their name to you? Have you ever met a person who cannot read but could say the name? Yes. Have you not had babies in your houses? Yes. And you kept saying the baby's name, the baby said, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Does, da does Daddy have a vowel in it? Yes. Ah, good. Can the baby read? No. So I don't need a vowel to say a name. Vowels are all about sounding things when I read. So it can continue. It shall be ignored. I don't need fake account people. Whether you're he, she, or it, I think you're an it. So the more, the, the Ten Commandments don't have Yahweh's name in terms of him teaching Moshe's name. Yahweh spoke his name to Moshe in, verse, in, verse, in chapter 3 of Genesis, before any commandments were given. Before he sent Moshe back to Israel, he told Moshe's name. 
And he didn't write it. He said it. It. So you see here, where it's clear that Yahweh is telling Israel, whenever you see a new moon, you have to have a celebration. It was a commandment. It was a feast. Whenever a new moon appeared, Yeshua had a feast because it always said it's the beginning of the month for them. Let's go to Psalm 81, baby. Verse 3. Psalm 81. There's David speaking again. I love him. Because he was reminding himself and the, and the people of Israel of, of certain laws. And his writers were also reminding the people. Psalm 81. Verse 3. Okay. Look at this. This is important. This is critical right here. Blow at the time of the new moon. New moon, the trumpet, when you blow it at the time of the new moon, it is in your Bible. At the time of the trumpet is when you blow the new moon. When you, at the time of the new moon, when you blow the trumpet. What does new moon mean? 2310. Look in it, please. And let's go to definition. Chodesh is before you again. A new moon, a month, which is the beginning of the month. I'm showing you this Adventist for your own good. The beginning of every single month in Israel has a new moon. All of them. Every single month in Israel, you can go back, has a new moon. So blow at the time of the new moon the trumpet. At the full moon, on the day, go up, our solemn feast. Next verse. Why? Look at this. For a statute for Israel. Look at this. A law that is a law. Do you see that? Did Adventists tell you that they keep the law? Do Adventists tell you that? Is that the law? A law of the God of Yaakov. Uh, Jacob is, look, show them Yaakov's name. You see Yaakov at the top, but you have Jacob at the bottom. Y-A-A-Q-O, of course it's pronounced Yaakov. King James Version decided they're going to change the name. Their names don't change. But that's another topic. So it is written before you that this new moon is a principle is a law. It's not an option. It wasn't whether you, you choose to or not choose to. It was a law. Now I want to show you something. First Samuel chapter 20. Verse 24. For Yisrael, every single month begins with the new moon. They don't just count on like, 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 like Pope Gregory the 13. So everyone who follows Pope Gregory's calendar cannot tell me that your actions are in synchrony with Yahweh's calendar. Absolute garbage. Foolishness. Now Adventists are going to just throw scriptures all around the place. They are not going to deal with what Yahweh said. They're going to just toss scriptures all around the place in a fit of rage. They're not going to deal with what Yahweh said. 1 Samuel 20, verse 24. I'm showing you what is written. And I'm showing you what the language of origin says. So this is where David is hiding, or David is hiding from. Shaul the king. But there's a feast. Let us see what happened. First Shemuel 
20 from verse 24. Can you see? I hope it's clear. If you have any challenge, just let me know because I really want you all to read this part as clearly as possible. It says, And hid David in the field. You know, follow me. I'm at the top. And when had come, who <coughs> oh, the new moon, Chodesh. What happens at the new moon? It's a new month. What happens at the new moon? It is a new month. If the comments are blocking, you simply swipe to the right. The comments are removed. Maybe some of you say, I want to see the comments. So, just scroll up a little higher from please, Mary. Odessa Isaacs is online. All right? So, it's online, Odessa. You can find it. This is called the, the, the Bible.com. So, you can find all this right here. So, the new moon and sat down the king upon the feast to eat. Why? Because every new moon, the scripture says, there's a feast. Numbers chapter 10. Numbers chapter 10 was very clear. They keep the feast. Numbers 29 verse 6, they keep a feast at new moon. New moon is like a holiday. Whenever they see the new moon, they knew what to do. It's commanded. Now let's go to the next verse and see what happened. So it was a new moon. And sat the king on his seat as at other times on a seat, the wall or the by wall, and arose Jonathan, his name is at the top, Jonathan, and sat Abner by side of Shaul, but was empty place of David. So David wasn't there. Next verse. Oh, this is good. This is good. And nevertheless not did say <coughs> Shaul anything day that in other words Shaul said nothing anything that day. He didn't say anything on that day. For, scroll up please. Keep your words above the comment. Good. For he thought Something has happened to him. Not unclean he is. Surely not unclean he is. Meaning, Shaul is saying David isn't here. And if David isn't here, it means something is wrong because he would never miss this feast. I hope you get that. Good next one, please, Mary. Huh? Sha Shaul wants to kill David. See, he doesn't see David. And he's saying it has to be he's unclean because if he's unclean, he can't show up for the feast. Which feast? It was new moon. What happens at new moon? They have a feast. It's the beginning of the month. The next verse. And, scroll up a bit. Oh, saints, look at this. <laughs> and it came to pass... The next day, look at this girlfriend, the month, the second day. In other words, it came to pass the next day after this feast, the second day of the month. What was the first day? The new moon. The Bible tells you here, clearly, that the second day of the month was always the day after new moon. It's right before you. It's right before you. So we have a scriptural record. Let's go to the slides now, baby, please. We have a scriptural record to show that the new moon was always the first day of the month. And the second day of the month was the day after the new moon. Slow with me here. 
What we also know is that the new moon was always a festive day. You don't work on that day. It wasn't a Shabbat. It was a day whereby they were able to relax. They had a feast. They would eat. They would celebrate because here's a new month for us. Now, here's my question for you all. All you Adventists who are watching me but can't talk. And I'm fine that you can't speak. We have an almanac. <laughs> and this almanac shows us the moon cycle. You can find it anywhere. I will show you the moon cycle for April. We're in May now, but I'll show you it for April, for last month, to show you what happened. And I'll show you exactly what day is the seventh day, according to Yahweh's calendar. Does the new moon mark the beginning of the month? Apostle Branham, you're awake now, huh? Is there any law in Yahweh's scripture that says the new moon has to be on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday? New moon means day one of the month. After that, you work from day two is your first working day. Every single month it happens as a cycle. Exodus 12, Yahweh said you keep the lamb and, or the kid until the 14th day of the month. The 14th day of the month is always the 14th day of the month for Yisrael in terms of the moon cycle. So this is important for you all to note here. The Passover lamb for Yisrael was killed on the 14th day of the month. Every single time. It didn't, it didn't have like, like your Easter, the 14th, one day, then the 12th, another day. Because if your mother dies today, you take note of the date on which she died. And next year will be the same date. The next year will be the same date. The next year will be the same date. Always the same date. Because the date doesn't change. For Yisrael, the 14th day of the month of Aviv is always the 14th day of the month of Aviv after the new moon begins. Always. It never changes. So I will show you a moon cycle for Yisrael. Look. Look on your screen. Tell me if you can see the moon cycle clearly, please. Can you see the moon cycle on the screen? I need it to be as clear as ever. So we have the, the Roman Catholic and the Adventists. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Just go with me to the top, please. Sunday from the left. Can you see? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Adventists say every time you see Saturday, it's the Sabbath. Do they not say that? Do the Seventh-day Adventists say that Saturday is the Sabbath? Thank you. Okay, somebody said, Diane says very clear. Thank you, Sister Diane. Now look at Yahweh's calendar system. So the first quarter, go to the first day of the Wednesday. <coughs> go to Wednesday at the top. At the top, the first. Is FQ, which is first quarter. Good? That's a moon cycle we're in now. The second day, keep going. Day two. Three, the, the fourth of the month, the fifth of the month. So according to the Adventists, hear me now. According to the Adventists, every Saturday is the Sabbath. According to the Adventists, Every Saturday, which means the 4th, the 11th, the 18th, the 25th of April, had to be a Sabbath. Okay, then. But let's see when the new moon occurs, according to Yahweh's calendar. <coughs> the 22nd of April is NM, which is new moon. Let me zoom in so you can see it clearly. New moon, see that? The 22nd of April is NM. New moon. Saints. The Bible says, I didn't say it, that the month begins at the new moon. I showed it at, at nauseam. At nauseam. I showed it across the board at length. So we all understand that the new moon for Israel means it's the first of the month. Look carefully. It's a festival. Circle, go around number one. Okay. <coughs> Okay. 
Saints. Saints. Wherever you see an M, it's a feast for Israel. It's a time where they have to know it's the beginning of the month. They have a special feast of Yahweh. They blow the trumpet, announce that the month has begun. But they don't work on that day. Because they see that this is the day for us to relax since we have six days. What does Yahweh's law? Now I'm going to answer the question the young lady asked if she's still on the broadcast. Yahweh says you must work for six days. He never said the first six days of the week. A to Pope Gregory. For six days you work. Day one, that first one is not a work day. So number two, go with me now. You have the new moon. Number two is when you start working. So that's work day number one. Next. Work day number two. Next. Work day number three. Next. Work day number four. Next. Work day number five. Next. Work day number six. So the seventh day is really the sixth day of your work. You stop working then. Look now. What do you see? That is a Shabbat. Always a Shabbat. What day of the week is that? Don't, don't whisper, Mary. What day of the week is it? It's a Wednesday. So the first Shabbat for Israel, according to Yahweh's rule, was the, was the 29th of April, a Wednesday. According to Yahweh's calendar that he gave to Israel from the Bible. Who wants to challenge that? Good, Michelle, you're there. Who wants to challenge that? The new moon is the beginning of the month. You don't work on the first day because of the day of celebration. Day two, you work. Because they, the scripture says it was the day after new moon, the second day of the month. The third day of the month. The fourth day of the month. So you have six working days. Count them in yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six. The next day is the weekly Shabbat. Go to the next slide, please. <coughs> We're in May. So May has a new moon somewhere. See that? So let's see if we can find the new moon for May. Mary found it already. The 22nd of May is the new moon. You see that? Go to the other slide, please. <coughs> Now look at see. So the 22nd is always, the 22nd, the new moon is always the beginning of the month for Israel. What day does that begin with? What day of the week is that according to Pope Gregory? Friday. So April, it was a Wednesday. Here you see, Yahweh told Yeshua in Exodus chapter 12 verse 1, this month, meaning this new moon, shall be the beginning of months for you. Exodus 12 verse 1, it's in the Bible. This month, Exodus 12, verse 1, it's in your Bible. Yehizkel, you see Ezekiel, 26, verse 1, it's in your Bible. Whenever you saw that new moon, it was a new month. Numbers 10, it's in your Bible. Numbers 10, verse 10. Numbers 29, verse 6. It's, I give you more than one witness that the new moon is the beginning of the month. Especially Exodus 12, verse 1. So for May, the 22nd of this month, When you get to that date, it's the new moon. There's a festival because it's a time of meeting. It's a feast because it's a pointed time. There's a trumpet, there's a shofar that sounded, and Yisrael knew this is the beginning of the month for us. They don't work on that day. It's not a Shabbat per se, but they just relax because the next day is work. Let's go, Mari. Saturday is the first work day. The next work day is day three. The next work day, day four, that's the third work day. That's the fourth work day. That's the fifth work day. That's the sixth working day. And the 29th of May, <laughs> girl, this is your birthday, boy. <laughs> the 29th of May is a Shabbat. It's before you. It's before you on your screen. The 29th of May is a Shabbat. Because the first day of the month for them is always on a new moon. That's established. Only a moron would say something different. And the first day of the month, they never work. It's not counted as a work day. 
Yahweh said in his word, you work for six days. He never said the first six days of the week. He said you work for six days. And on the seventh, you rest. How did they begin? How did they know when to begin? Ah, I totally remember Genesis 1 now. It began with darkness. Then Yahweh said, I'll work. Yisrael never worked when it was darkness. In the context of, okay, we will have a feast because it's a symbol to us that tomorrow work begins. Let's find the next one. Huh? No, next one, you'll see it. <coughs> next slide. So I said, I'm going to show you all what happens here. How do you know the Shabbat that you shall keep? It's right there before you. The 15th is another Shabbat. The 22nd is another Shabbat. The 29th is another Shabbat. It's right before you. So for Yisrael, the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, the 29th is their Shabbat. They know it, hands down. Brother Chubby got it. It's before your eyes. So all they have to keep doing is keep counting from that period. It's right before you. So watch this. Go to the 29th, the 20th, the 29th, right, in red. The 20, so that's a Shabbat. The next day, go, to the, go follow the arrow. It's not a Shabbat. It's an open day. Because, watch this, they're transitioning into a new month. I hope you saw that. In, in June now, look what happened. On the 22nd of May, you see what happened here? There is a Shabbat. So the first, the eighth. So the, the previous Shabbat would have been for April. So April, April 8th, April 15th, April 22nd, April 29th will always be, those, those days will always be Shabbat. The new moon begins from, for, for, for Israel. Look at May. The 22nd of May is a new moon. So they transition into a feast. They relax and say, okay then, Tomorrow begins a work day. So day two is a work day. Three is a work day. Four is a work day. Five is a work day. Six a work day. Seven a work day. Day eight is a Shabbat. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six working days after the new moon. The next is a Shabbat. Next slide, baby. So look at this now. The first, the eighth, the 15th day, the 22nd day, the 29th day is always Shabbat for Israel. It doesn't have to be Saturday. The 30th day, look at that, 30 days. And look what, there's an open day for them. The very next day is a new moon. The first, what do you see next? Under that, scroll up please, though you can't scroll up on. Look at that, the first, <coughs> look at that, circle eight, go to the left. New moon again in June. The 21st of June is a new moon. Look at me at what you see. The eighth day is a Shabbat. All ways. Saints, I will help you with this. I'm giving you days in a month for Israel. Day number one. You see it? is an, a day they don't work. It's not a Shabbat, it's a feast. Day 8, day 15, day 22, day 29. They are always Shabbats. Let me help you with this here, please. Yisrael never has a month with 31 days in it. The longest month is 30 days. Why? Because of the cycle that's lunar solar. The year is determined by the sun, but more than that, the moon cycles, 12 of them, in divisions. Yisrael never has 31 days in any month. Never did, never will. Do Adventists have 31 days in their month? Do Adventist Sabbaths come every Saturday? Do they keep Yahweh's prescribed new moon no. calendar? Debbie's asking a question from Elton's phone. Since the months are different in the Hebrew calendar, how do you determine here exactly, Debbie just said it. Yisrael's have the Hebrew year, Debbie, 
Can you find last week's teaching? The Hebrew year has 353, 354, 383, 384 days. Different days. A leap year for Yisrael is a whole month added in a leap year. Not a day, not three quarters of a day. Because Yisrael has got a different system depth. So a year for Yisrael varies in length. Because they have to make up time for fractions of time lost. So Yahweh gave their leaders precise calculations. So every uh, uh, particular period, when it's a leap year, they add an entire month, not a three quarters of a day like Pope Gregory did. And when they add that 13th month to their calendar, Yisrael is able to understand that for this month, we are making up for the time we've lost before, and we have Shabbats in it too. <coughs> right there. So I'll show you. Open that slide for me, please. My niece asks a question. We have proven. We have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. Number one, that Yahweh has announced in Scripture, by command, you have to start your month at the new moon. That's, that's non-negotiable. And based on the new moon, the second day of the month comes after the new moon. First Shemuel 20, 20, it's right there from 24 to 28. So second day is a work day, third is a work day, fourth is a work day. As I said, every eighth day, every 15th day, every 29th day, every 22nd day is a Shabbat. Watch this. But within the year, within the month, like the 10th month, the 7th month, there's special Shabbats that they have to keep. At Peshach, they have to keep special Shabbats, two within the same week. So Yahweh said that the moon and the sun will be for weeks, for days, for years, for months. How do they know a month? By the moon. What makes a month? Because it still doesn't get it, and I don't expect it to get it ever. What makes a month? What makes a month? Weeks. They're days in a month. Now look at this, Debbie, since you asked the question they heard. I don't know if you can see it. The Hebrew calendar days in a year. Since Debbie asked the question. <laughs> Half the typical one has 354 days. However, a year in the Hebrew calendar can be 353, 354, 355, 383, 384, or 385 days. Regular common years have got 12 months with a total of 354 days. Leap years have 13 months and are 384 days long. With months with uneven numbers usually have 30 days, look at that, while months with even numbers have 29 days. It's right before you. <coughs> it's right before you, saints. My question this week was my question last week shall be my question forever. Can the 365-day solar calendar synchronize or match the Hebrew calendar that has 355, 353, 354, 383, or 385 days? Can it match? If you put the Hebrew calendar beside the Pope Gregory's calendar that Adventists use, it will never match. Never. So Marcus Singh is asking a very valid question. What about the Jews? They also celebrate Shabbat every week on Saturday. Could you explain that for me? I surely can, and I'm happy that you ask the question. Because the typical question that comes when this arises. The Jews, first of all, in Israel today, were compelled to do that which pleases a particular group of people or number one, they will never have a nation again. In 1948, the United Nations decided that Yeshua should be called a nation. Yahweh didn't decide. Get it clear, please. A European system said, you will follow our rules, we'll call you a nation. Watch this. Since you asked the question. There's a star of Molech. David never had a star. There's no scripture that talks a star of David. David never had a star. It's called a star of Molech. They put it on the Hebrew flag and say, follow that which is a Hindu symbol, by the way. And they say, put it on your flag. 
they were compelled to synchronize the timing with these heathens or they shall never be a nation and they shall remain persecuted. Yisrael, there's a man called Shem Tauf. Shem Tauf was a, was a, was a scholar, was a, a, a learned man in the day. And during the persecution of the early saints, the church said, the church said, we shall kill you all unless you abide by our teaching. Number one, drop these fees that you keep. So they had to drop it. They had to lie and say that the Shabbat system given to them was not the right one. Watch this. But there are still Hebrew people today who keep the right Shabbat. How do I know that? Because whenever their feast periods come, they don't keep Saturday as a Shabbat in the context. They keep their feast according to Yahweh's system. But they were compelled by persecution. I have some more news for you though. It gets better. It gets better, uh, my brother who asked the question. In Lamentations, the prophet Yirmiyahu, in, read it for yourself. In Lamentations, the prophet Yirmiyahu said these words by Yahweh's spirit. I will make them forget my Shabbat. Read Lamentations. Oh, this is good. I'm happy you asked the question. That's in your Bible, by the way. In your Bible, by the way, it's written. I, Yahweh, will make them forget my Shabbat. Because they're wicked. They bow to European system just so they could be a nation. Watch this. And so that Europeans can come in and say that they're the true Hebrew people. Jews is a term given to European-like people in Israel. Yahweh never called them Jews. They call Yehudim from, Ye from Yehuda, or the Hebrew of Yisrael. As Pastor Mel is saying, so the flag, can you, can you just find a flag for me please and put it up the flag of Israel? Put it on the screen. Thank you. The flag that Israel has, has a demonic, wicked, evil, satanic symbol on it. Y'all gonna make me preach now. You make me preach now. In 1948, when the United Nations agreed to make them a nation, they had to have a package, an agreement. You do what we say or we'll never protect you. David never has a star. And some of you got on your, on your necklace, on your ring, the star of David, you better take it off. Because you, you're announcing the star of Molesh, you're announcing Shiva, I think it is. Uh, the, the male and female Hindu gods, they're having sex. Okay, there it is. You see that on your screen? David the king never had that. Never had that. That is a Hindu symbol marking male and female having sex. There's nothing called a star of David in the Bible. That is a Hindu, a Hindu symbol. Now, can you tell me when Yahweh ever gave Israel a Hindu symbol? That's why they keep Saturday every week as a Shabbat. Because they're blind and they're wicked. Yahweh never gave Israel any symbol called a Star of David. Because they, there's no scripture saying David had a star. There's a scripture that says, I say to you again, Molech has a star. That's the star of Molech. So what you see happening in Israel now is that they're not Jews. Or they are Jews, they're not Hebrew. Jew is the derogatory term. It is not found anywhere in your Bible in the context of Yahweh's original language. Never. Because there's no J in the Hebrew alphabet. They call Yehudim or they call the sons or the children of Yisrael. They're not called Jews. Put it up for me, please, baby. Let me show these, these people what's what, what going on here. Roll the screen up. 
Up, look to the left side of the screen. Circle it for me. Look. That's the star of Molesh on the left. What do you see on the Pope's hat? <coughs> what do you see on the Pope's hat? Look what they call the Star of David. The Star of Molesh is the Star of David when the scripture never said that David had a star. Read. Nowhere in the Bible or Talmud, which are teachings, is referenced as the Star of David. It's not found anywhere in scripture. However, the Bible does reference this to be the Star of Rempha. Or Molesh. I told you that. <laughs> I'll start a fight, Apostle Stephen. Those rabbis are more than evil, uh, Mama Ward. Not all of them. There's a remnant in Israel, but I know that is not a remnant. David never had a star. So all you keep in every Saturday Sabbath, you're deceived. I just showed you where you're deceived. You're deceived because Yahweh month begins every single month at new moon. It's in your Bible. Exodus 12 verse 1. Genesis says the moon is given for the month. Psalm 80, was it? 83, I think it is, speaks clearly to it that he gave the moon for the season. Season is meeting place, feast, appointed time. Don't tell me. Do not tell me anything about the star of David on Israel flag. Israel, Israel, Israel as you know now, is filled with heathens. Filled with them. What does Revelation 2 tell you? I shall make those who have the synagogue of Hasatan come and bow to your feet. Watch this. It says, who say that they are Hebrews, but they are not. It's in your Bible, you know. I'm not saying that something was in the scripture. Yeshua promised, I shall make those who say that they are Hebrews, but they're not. They're of the synagogue of Hasatan. I shall make them come and bow to your feet. It's in your Bible. There has to be somebody who's saying they are of Israel and they're not. If you look at a Hindu representation of it, it represents sexual intercourse between a male and a female. Do you know that Israel today, where all these Sabbath keeping people are, they call the capital of the Middle East for homosexuals? I hope some of you could, could swallow this afternoon. Do you know that the Sabbath keeping Jews in, in the Middle East today, the Saturday keeping Sabbath, by the way, their country is called the capital for homosexuals in the Middle East. Not Iran, not Iraq, not Saudi Arabia, not Kuwait. Pride Month is, put it up on the screen for me, please. Pride Month is held in Israel, where hundreds of thousands of sodomites walk the street, endorsed by the country. And they keep Sabbath every Saturday. That sounds familiar to y'all. Are you talking about keeping Sabbath? They could keep Saturday because Saturday was never Yahweh, never said every Saturday is a Shabbat. He said every seventh day, beginning with the new moon. That's when a month begins. Let me see the picture, please. The image. I need images. Good. And the wicked, exactly. Hedonistic USA is telling Israel, yeah, you're right. You, you're the true people. Yeah, man. We're on your side. Anybody. And, and these church people in the US like to say, oh, yeah, whoever blessed Israel is blessed. Yahweh doesn't mean blessed to support you with wickedness. To bless means to empower, to prosper. It doesn't mean to speak, to allow you to do wicked. Because you can't prosper doing what is wicked. Let me show you what's on the screen. If you got high blood pressure, don't watch. 
Look at that. Look what's on your screen, please. Look. Do you see the Star of David? That's Pride Month in Tel Aviv. That is Pride Month in Tel Aviv in Israel. Look. What does the law say? Since you people say keep the law, and the Hebrew people keep the law, which one of them is stoned to death? Who is supposed to be stoned to death according to the law? Mary said that one on the right. <laughs> According to the law, if you people say we keep the law, the law says homosexuals are stoned to death. What do you see on your screen? In Israel. My son said he see the star of David. <laughs> David doesn't have a star, baby. The star of Molech. That's okay, baby. So in closing, let me establish this with y'all. <laughs> what you think is Israel or Hebrew, Yeshua said it himself. They will come and bow to your feet. Who say, who say they're Hebrew, but they're not Hebrew. They're of the church or the synagogue of Hasatan, the devil. That's where they're from. They are from the synagogue of Hasatan. Do you know many Hebrew people, including Benny Hinn, says the Messiah's name is Jesus and he knows Hebrew? Do you many Hebrew rabbis go on television to make money and say the Messiah's name is Jesus and they know Hebrew? That nobody's name could be, could be called something else and, and, and name is a name? Let Yahweh be true and every man a liar. Bring up that one for me with, 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 with uh, a balloon. <laughs> Look. Look. Look on your screen. That's Israel. That's the Holy Land. That you'll pay money to go to walk on because it's blessed. <laughs> Look, that's Holy Land right before your eyes. Look, do you see people stoning them to death? No. <laughs> My daughter said it looked quite lively. <laughs> Don't play with the truth here. The truth is that the keep it, there are people in Israel now and in other tribes around the world who keep Shabbat according to Yahweh's system. Let me ask you a question as I depart. Can any one of you, anybody in this, on this broadcast right now, can you go outside at night and look up and see what the moon looks like? Whether it's a new moon, a full moon, a first quarter, second quarter, waxing gibbous, waning gibbous, and things like that. Can you, or to say gibbous, <laughs> Can you go outside and look up? And I'm not asking a stupid question. Honestly, are you able to go outside, look up, and see the moon? Yes. It's not a trick question. <laughs> Good. If you could go out and look up and see the moon, when it's new moon, because you have, you have a calendar with the, with the moons in it. Watch this, with the moon phases. When you go and see it's a new moon, can you not determine then, according to what I just read, hey, this is the first day, according to Yahweh's calendar, can you not do that? I can do that. Good. Then I begin to count from that day. And I work for six days. The seventh day is a Shabbat. I will tell you again, according to Yahweh's calendar, day 8, day, day 15, day 22, day 29 are always Shabbats. Always. Every single time. When you see the new moon, day 8, day 15, day 22, and day 29 are always Shabbat. Why do they keep Sabbath? Look, can you read the screen, please? Read. <laughs> CNN, read, please. CNN lists Tel Aviv, this is in the capital of Israel, in 10 gay honeymoon hotspots. Read. Read it again. <laughs> CNN. List Tel Aviv. In the top 10 gay honeymoon hotspot. Honeymoon. What do you do on honeymoon? So imagine two men are married and they fly to Israel as a top 10 honeymoon hotspot. When they keep Shabbat every week. But they don't stone these, 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 these critters to death.
That is why Yahweh said, read Lamentations for yourself. In Lamentations, Yahweh said it plainly. I will make them forget my Shabbats. That's written. You can't change what Yahweh said. Once you forget his Shabbat, you keep anything called in the Shabbat. It's written in your Bible. That's why Adventists keep every Saturday because Yahweh said he'd make people forget. I didn't forget because I'm not heathenistic. I hope that this teaching today has brought you great clarity. And I hope that you've seen for yourself that Shabbat falls every 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th day after the new moon. Period. Bottom line, I dare one Adventist, not like it, <laughs> to present to me one scripture that says that the new moon is not the beginning of the month. One scripture that says that Yahweh told Israel to keep anything apart from the new moon as the month, as the new month. I hope this has brought you clarity. So if you want to keep Shabbat, go outside or take your phone as I showed you, look at an almanac and say, okay, according to this almanac, this is what I have to keep. But don't come to me Pope Gregory's calendar and tell me garbage because your, your Adventist Saturday keeping is garbage. And, by the way, if you break the Shabbat law, what is the penalty? Can anybody remember? According to Exodus 31, you, you have a death penalty applied to breaking Shabbat. <laughs> you are stoned to death for breaking the Shabbat. If, therefore, you are in my neighborhood and I'm keeping Shabbat, and you notice and I notice that you're not keeping Shabbat, I'm supposed to stone you to death because I have to keep the law. Do you all do that in your Adventist church? Or do you break the law? <laughs> While you're here, I'll ask my children this because they're young. Their mother also, their mother's also she has a bit more sense. <laughs> they're young. I'm only kidding with them. They're brilliant girls. They're smarter than me. Is there a law regarding murder in Guyana? Yes. Do you all have to talk hard, man? Yes. Thank you. Good. Is there a law? Yes. Okay. If there's a law regarding murder in Guyana, I'm talking to my children now. They, they can't hear you. Talk hard. Let me hear you. Yes. Okay. Yes. If somebody commits what Guyana presumes to be premeditated murder, America calls it first degree murder. What is the penalty? Life imprisonment or? Death. Okay, good. <laughs> Life imprisonment or death. So you see, girls, there is a law and then there is a consequence. Watch this. But the law regarding death in the books of Guyana have the consequence right there. If somebody commits a penalty, commits this act of murder, and we find it's premeditated, it's not manslaughter, which is a lesser, a lesser a crime. But you, you plan this and everything else. Watch this. There's a penalty the judges have to read and say, okay, according to what I saw, you deliberately did this. You planned it with a long time. You sought for an opportunity to do it. You had no passion of anger or anything like that. So by all means, you did this in a premeditated manner. There is a consequence. Correct? Yes. yes. All right. Let us just say, because we know this happening in Guyana. Guyana is a beautiful place, by the way. It happened in Guyana a lot. Somebody commits premeditated murder. Everybody sees. But because their uncle is the president, or their cousin is the president, they walk free the next day. What do guy need say? What do you cry? Injustice. Come talk hard, talk hard, man. Injustice. Right! You shout injustice, meaning you are not keeping the law. I hope you all get that. Although the person committed the act, they're guilty of the act. We see the penalty is not being applied, so there is injustice. How can you Adventists tell me that the law said, because you said Yeshua never came to change the law. You said it, and that's the truth. You said Jesus didn't come to change the law. Good. 
And Jesus didn't come to abolish the law because good. If that's the case, the law says that anybody who breaks the Shabbat must be put to death. Do you put people to death for breaking Shabbat? So you Adventists are committing injustice, which is actually illegal. Injustice means the actions are illegal. So it's illegal for somebody to kill somebody and just walk the street and say, I don't care, I'm fine, my uncle is the president. That's illegal. It's illegal for you Adventists to say you keep the law, but when I don't keep it, you don't throw me to death. You're breaking the law. Look, read what the conference for Joseph put on the screen, please. What the Adventist, what the uh, Catholic Church tell y'all. The Catholic Church says it is not the Star of David or the Star of Creation. The six points represent six creation days that have been using for its cent for centuries. Look at that. The Jew says the Star of David. So who's lying? And may I add that all of you think that the Catholic Church made Sunday the official Shabbat, it doesn't affect me. Because I do not keep Sundays anything. If there's one entity in this world that knows the truth or has a record of true things is the Catholic Church. I'm talking about Rome. But they don't release it. Because they know that they themselves will be destroyed if they release it. I bid you shalom. I thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate, I appreciate the fact that Yahweh has caused some of you to have understanding. I also appreciate the fact that Yahweh has allowed a moron to come in the broadcast to show you what happens when people are blinded. When you are blinded to the truth, you can never, until Yahweh opens the eyes, see it. May grace be with you. May shalom abide with you. And may Yahweh keep you. Pope Gregory has a calendar that the, that the seven-day Adventists abide by. Yahweh does not abide by a solar calendar. Yahweh told the people to keep a lunar solar calendar. And every new moon marks the first day of every month. All the time for every single month. Thank you so much, Daddy. I appreciate it. Errol London is my father. I always tell people that. You need to know it. Blessings be upon you all. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. You're watching the broadcast on YouTube. I appreciate your doing so. Please remember to subscribe and to uh, <coughs> click the notification bell so you can know when, when broadcasts are uploaded or if I'm live on YouTube. Okay? Shalom, saints. Do well. Enjoy your family. Enjoy this time that you're here, and I look forward to seeing you again soon before the week is over. Shalom. Blessings. It's Mirha. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Aubrey. We are safe in it as well. Bye bye. <laughs> Brother Flying. <laughs>